it's important to understand the difference between weather and climate. Weather is something that changes every day and maybe even every hour and it's dependent on your location, where you are on the planet. Some places are hotter, some places are cooler, and it also depends on the season. Climate is related to temperature and weather. It is related to temperature, but it's not something that changes every day. Climate is something that is measured as an average over the entire planet, although temperatures and weather can change on a day-to-day -day basis or on a location basis. Climate change is not something that's talked about as a day-to-day. -day. Climate change occurs on a thousand-year time scale or hundred-thousand-year time scale. The approximate age of Earth in the universe is about 4.5 billion years. Now, humans haven't been around for all that time, and that's partly because the Earth hasn't been the same this whole time. The atmosphere was initially different. There wasn't oxygen. The um, temperatures weren't initially the same, and nor have they been the same throughout that 4.5 billion years. But the climate, which has now been stable for about 10,000 years, has been changing. Climate change happens over thousands or even hundreds of thousands of years. In the thousand year time span, climate change is due to changes in Earth's orbit or tilt or a little bit of wobble in the axis has led to climate changes which are seen in ice ages where for thousands of years Europe for instance was covered in ice and we have some remnants of the last ice age in the glaciers that are at the poles the north and south pole. Here's a graph showing changes in the concentration of carbon dioxide gas in Earth's atmosphere and this is measured on the x-axis from 1960 up to 2010. Though there's an inset graph that indicates the yearly change, it goes up and down, which is reflected on the red, it goes up and down. That's based on how the Earth faces the Northern Hemisphere versus the Southern Hemisphere. More carbon dioxide is released in the beginning half of the year than the back half of the year. This carbon dioxide concentration that's measured in parts per million, you can see has increased since 1960. When given this data, people said, so we don't know what the carbon dioxide concentrations were before 1960. So that's where scientists said, okay, let's go get some more data. This involves ice cores from glaciers, these glaciers that have existed for thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years. And what's trapped in these glaciers are microscopic air bubbles that allow you to measure the concentrations of what the gases were back in time. So it gives you a little window into what the mixtures of gases were. And depending on how far down you drill, the further down you drill, the further back in time you can go. And you can actually get a snapshot of the concentrations of gases. You take direct measurements of the carbon dioxide gas and figure out what concentration of carbon dioxide gas existed 100,000 years ago, 500,000, all the way back to 800,000 years ago from drilling all the way down in this uh, glacier. By looking at the ratios of carbon isotopes, scientists are able to trace carbon dioxide as a product of fossil fuel combustion, as opposed to carbon dioxide that's just been around or coming from other reactions like volcanic eruptions. By looking at the ratios of the hydrogen isotopes, that's hydrogen 1 and hydrogen 2, those are the hydrogens in water, H2O, that is also a vapor, a gas in those bubbles. Scientists can get an understanding the temperatures of 100,000 or 500,000 or 800,000 years ago, because you can't just go back and measure the temperature, but using the ratio of hydrogen isotopes, scientists can estimate the temperatures from those years past. Now remember why scientists want to look at the carbon dioxide concentration. It's because it's known that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of Venus causes the average temperatures of Venus to be warmer than they should be because carbon dioxide traps heat. Carbon dioxide will act the same in Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is heat trapping and that will cause the temperatures to increase. So this graph shows the ice core data, which has the thousands of years ago, the concentrations of carbon dioxide. You can see have not been stable. They've gone up, down, up, down, but 
the concentrations of carbon dioxide for about 800,000 years were within about 200 to 300 parts per million. Well, now we have this part of the graph, which is where we are current day, where we are at 400, just above 400 parts per million and carbon dioxide. So the current concentration of carbon dioxide is 100 parts per million higher than at ever, any time over the last approximately million years. Why is there more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in this last 200 years or so? It's because of anthropogenic influences. Anthropogenic means human activities. This is industry, transportation, mining, and agriculture. All of these activities release carbon dioxide as a product of chemical reactions. From the ice core data, it's also known that we can figure out the temperatures going back. The temperatures shown here are by year on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, they're not reported as temperatures, but difference from average. So you can see starting in 1880, these are slightly below the average over the entire Earth for one year, and then steadily going up and up and up and up. This graph shows an overlay of the carbon dioxide concentrations with the temperatures. Because atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations are correlated with temperatures, this graph shows that the blue, the carbon dioxide concentrations, have gone down and up and down and up and down and up. The temperatures have gone down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up. These changes in temperatures have happened over 100,000 year time span, going down, going up. Well, what that allows for is an understanding of evolution. So in 100,000 years, organisms could evolve some lost, some improved, and that allows for uh, the existence of organisms to continue throughout these major climate changes. What we have now is carbon dioxide concentrations on this graph, 100 parts per million above they've ever been, so that's the blue line. Now it's known that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is linked to temperature, so what will the temperatures be? So that's the term global warming. It's expected that the temperatures will rise. Uh, this very fast climate change, will that allow for organisms and living things to adapt and evolve? The thing about temperature increases is that the warming of the planet hasn't affected the planet equally. The, the North Pole is at top and South Pole down at the bottom. So the North Pole has this red blotch, which is higher temperatures relative to average about two to three degrees celsius and this is also true down here if we were to flip it on the south pole the poles have warmed faster than the rest of earth 